Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight on what will go down as a red letter day in the history of the Barack Obama presidency. The president today convening a hastily called press conference to try to tamp down the political crisis he is in after announcing the very, 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 very generous deal he offered to congressional Republicans on taxes. Rebutting criticism from the left that he gave too much, that he traded away too many bad policies for not enough in the way of good policies. The president today stepped up to that microphone and he talked a lot about fighting. I will continue to fight before the American people to make the point that the Republican position is wrong. And, uh, you know, uh, I will be happy to see the Republicans test uh, whether or not uh, I'm itching for a fight on a whole range of issues. Uh, I suspect they will find I am. Uh, and I think the American people will be my, on my side on a whole bunch of these fights. We're going to keep on having this debate. We're going to keep on having this battle. And I'm happy to have that battle. I don't see how the Republicans win that argument. I understand the desire for a fight. I'm sympathetic to that. I'm as opposed to the high-end tax cuts today as I've been for years. In the long run, we simply can't afford them. And when they expire in two years, I will fight to end them. I will fight to end them. The president today declaring himself a combatant, a man who is willing to fight, fight, fight for what he believes, one who is not only capable of political combat, but in his words, one who is itching for it. He said in his calm, collected way that he is itching for a fight with Republicans, which made it all the more remarkable when he pivoted sharply to actually looking like he was itching for a fight, raising his voice, getting sarcastic, and as animated as he has ever appeared in a presidential con a pre press conference while he denounced the supposed purity and sanctimoniousness of who I guess he sees as his real political enemies. You know, so, so this notion that somehow, um, y you know, we are willing to compromise too much uh, reminds me of the debate that we had during health care. Th th this is the public option debate all over again. So I pass a signature piece of legislation where we finally get health care for all Americans, something that Democrats had been fighting for for a hundred years, but because there was a provision in there that they didn't get that would have affected maybe a couple of million people, even though we got health insurance for 30 million people and the potential for lower premiums for 100 million people, that somehow that was a sign of weakness and compromise. Now, if that's the standard by which we are measuring uh, success or core principles, then let's face it, we will never get anything done. People will have the satisfaction of having a purist position and no victories for the American people. And we will be able to feel good about ourselves and sanctimonious about how pure our intentions are and how tough we are. And in the meantime, the American people are still seeing themselves not able to get health insurance because of pre-existing condition. Or not being able to pay their bills because their unemployment insurance ran out. That can't be the measure of, of how we think about our public service. That can't be the measure of what it means to be a Democrat. The president today as animated and visibly angry as we have seen him as president, directing that ire at liberals, not only denouncing liberals as sanctimonious and in it for their own satisfaction with themselves rather than the good of the country, but also defending his approach to dealing with Republicans against the liberal critique at least the liberal critique as it was described by the White House press corps. Mr. President, what do you say to Democrats who say you're rewarding Republican obstruction here? You yourself used in your opening statement they were unwilling to budge on this. A lot of progressive Democrats are saying they're unwilling to budge right. and you're asking them to get off the fence and budge. Why should they be rewarding Republican obstruction? Well, let, 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 me, let me use a, a couple of analogies. Um, I've said before that I felt that the middle class tax cuts were being held hostage to the high end tax cuts. Uh, I think it's tempting not to negotiate with hostage takers. 
uh, unless the hostage gets harmed. Then uh, people will uh, question the wisdom of that strategy. In this case, the hostage was the American people, and I was not willing to see them get harmed. This, again, this is not an abstract political fight. This is not isolated here in Washington. There are people right now who, when their unemployment insurance runs out, will not be able to pay the bills. There are, there are, there are folks right now who are just barely making it on the paycheck that they've got, and when that paycheck gets smaller on January 1st, they're going to have to scramble to figure out, how am I going to pay all my bills? How am I going to keep on making the payments for my child's college tuition? What am I going to do exactly? Now, I could have enjoyed the battle with Republicans over the next month or two, uh, because, as I said, the American people are on our side. This is not a situation in which I have failed to persuade the American people of the rightness of our position. I know the polls. The polls are on our side on this. We weren't operating from a position of political weakness with respect to public opinion. The problem is that Republicans feel that this is the single most important thing that they have to fight for as a party. And in light of that, it was going to be a protracted battle, and they would have a stronger position next year than they do currently. If I may follow, aren't you mm -hmm. telegraphing, though, a negotiating strategy of how the Republicans can beat you in negotiations all the way through the next year because they can just stick to their guns, stay united, be unwilling to budge, to use your words, and force you to capitulate? Uh, I don't think so. And, and the reason is because this is a very unique circumstance. This is a very unique circumstance. Next time Republicans want something, they're not just going to try the same say no to everything strategy? Why wouldn't they do that? Uh, how do these negotiations affect negotiations or talks with Republicans about uh, raising the debt limit? Because it would seem um, that they have a significant amount of leverage over the White House now going in. Was there ever any attempt by the White House to include the raising the debt limit as part of this package? Uh, when you say that uh, it would seem they'll have a significant uh, amount of leverage over the White House, what do you mean? Just in the sense that, that you know, they'll say, essentially, we're not going to raise the, uh, the, we're not going to agree to it unless the, you know, White House is, is um, able to or willing to agree to significant spending cuts across the board that probably go deeper and further than what you're willing to do. Well, what, lever I mean, what leverage would you have? Look, uh, here's my expectation. Uh, and I'll take John Boehner at his word, that nobody, Democrat or Republican, uh, is willing to see the full faith and credit of the United States government uh, collapse, that that would not be a good thing to happen. You're going to take John Boehner's word for that? Here's the thing. I know liberals are very frustrating. But is frustration with liberals so all-consuming that the White House really has not noticed all the Republicans in Washington saying they are perfectly willing to see the, the full faith and credit of the United States government collapse? They're perfectly willing to default on the national debt to make a political point? Will you vote to increase the debt ceiling? Uh, no, I won't. I'm going to vote against raising the national debt ceiling. We simply can't continue to mortgage the future of our unborn children and grandchildren. It's not fair. It's not American. It's a form of taxation without representation. I just don't see this next Congress uh, raising the debt ceiling, uh, but it's certainly a challenge that we're going to have to deal with. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things in play during the slam duck session. And so you think that's out. something that you'll probably vote against? Raising? Yes. Will you filibuster any attempt to raise the debt limit? I think exactly what tax we'll use will have to be discussed and I do plan on working with others to see what the best strategy is. You need some people with principle in Washington who will stand up and say enough's enough. The president today pretty boldly asserted that no Republicans are going to vote against raising the debt ceiling. The president today boldly asserted that this negotiation on tax policy should not be seen as a template for future negotiations with Republicans because for this one, Republicans were holding the well-being of the American people hostage to get their way. And that certainly won't happen again. The president today also turned withering fire on liberals on the Democratic base for expecting too much. 
Turn that withering fire on liberals for expecting too much from a White House that for another hot minute has big Democratic majorities in both the House and the Senate. The president today also asserted, bottom line, that what he secured in this latest deal, the Republicans trumpeted and complimented him on today, that this GOP-approved plan was, at its base, a good deal for the American people. Was it? Was it a good deal? Stay tuned.